Hey, good morning, everyone. We're going to try and get started. This is such a friendly crowd and high energy. How are you? Uh, for folks who don't know, I'm fortunate enough to be the Lieutenant Governor in Massachusetts. My name is Kim Driscoll, and it's AAPI Month at this very special celebration with so many members here who are high energy, members of the community who help strengthen this work every single day. Um, I have the very difficult task of getting us settled and getting us ready for some terrific remarks from my partner in the corner office, our Governor Maura Healy. Uh, thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. Um, I, w I just want to say Kim Driscoll is just uh, hustling her tail off all around the state. You've seen her everywhere, and we could not have a greater partner or teammate than our Lieutenant Governor. So welcome to the State House, everyone. It is such a joy and an honor to be able to celebrate with you this Asian American and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Heritage Month here in this state. We have, we have incredible leaders from all around the state represented here in the hall this morning. I want to thank a few members of our team in particular, uh, Secretary Yvonne Howe for extending our leadership at the forefront of the global economy. Our MB, our MBTA manager, general manager, Phil Ang, who is looking to revitalize our public transit system. Gina Kwan, who is undersecretary for law enforcement, advancing community safety. Karen Tsang, who's working in Health and Human Services, a true leader on making sure we deliver care to residents across this commonwealth. We also have Julie Chen, Chancellor of the University of Massachusetts at Lowell, Pam Ettinger, President of the Bunker Hill Community College, expanding opportunity through education, and so, so many others. It is just great to see you, including many colleagues from the Attorney General's office, to Cindy and Miriam and others. Uh, great, to, great to see you as well. And of course, uh, we are in the People's House, and so many people working hard day in and day out, our colleagues in the legislature, including our legislative leaders, Tacky Chan, Don Wong, uh, Vanna Howard, Erica Eiterhoven, and am I missing, who else is here? Oh, Senator Brady, nice ally. <laughs> I know, that, I know there are others uh, because, you know, this is, um, the other day we did an event, some of us, on uh, addressing hate in the community, focused on anti-Semitism, but it's a broader message right now, isn't it, that we are a commonwealth, we are strong, we stand up to bigotry, to prejudice, to discrimination, we stand for and affirm and celebrate our wonderful, wonderful uh, collection and rainbow of races, ethnicities, cultures. It makes us stronger. It always has and it always will. And that's why we wanted to gather here today. I think this might be the largest, you tell me, I mean, this is a very significant uh, gathering here in the, in the hall. So thank you so much for coming. We have... We have leaders from so many incredible organizations who we partner with, people who have been mentors to me for a long, long time, and I thank you uh, all for that. Uh, business leaders, academic leaders. We have college students. Where are you? Where are you? Put your hands up. All right. Now, we, and we have, and we want you to stay in Massachusetts, okay? Will you promise me? You're gonna stay here. It's a great place to live, to grow a family, to grow a business. All right. So let's, um, let's talk about a, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, data that, that I've come by. I understand that um, in the last, between 2010 and 2020, the U.S. Census says that Massachusetts population grew by 7.4%. Now, in that same span, our Asian American population grew 48 percent, 48 percent. 
that's, that's how strong this community is. And this community is also diverse. It's Chinese American, Vietnamese American, Japanese American, Indian American, Korean American, and so, so much more. Asian Americans are leading and innovating across every industry, in small businesses, in our schools and colleges, and around our state. You know, last year the Lieutenant Governor and I were um, out and about uh, looking, looking for a job and trying to, rally, <laughs> trying to rally support around the state. And it was amazing, particularly we're here in Boston, which is important, um, and we're, so, we're gonna say more about our fabulous mayor in just a minute. It's also the fact that there's an incredible Asian American population around the state, and we need to support and draw upon that. It's not to say, though, that we don't have work to do. And I think that we saw, unfortunately, you know, particularly during the pandemic, this terrible spike in anti-Asian hate crimes across the country. We've had incidents here in Massachusetts that we simply cannot tolerate. And we know that hate crimes target individuals, they target communities, they hurt entire communities. And the ripple effects of those acts are so, so significant. Right now we're still shaken by the events in Allen, Texas, and the mass shooting, killing, including uh, members of the Cho family. So, so tragic. UMass Amherst graduate and, and with connections here. And that's why I'm delighted to see my colleagues in the Attorney General's office. I know we're committed to working together to uh, take a stand against hate crimes, hold people accountable uh, whenever they occur, and continue the work of education and acclimation, right? And working on general, you know, the humanity of all of us. We've got to do that as well. Um, we also need to combat the less visible acts sometimes that harm people, the bullying in schools and workplaces, the subtle or not so subtle racist language sometimes, the stereotyping, and of course the lack of, of representation. This is something that we are committed to as an administration. We've launched an equity assessment to make sure that government is doing all it can in helping our communities and not holding anyone back. We're pleased with the diversity of our cabinet um, and an ethos that's gonna run up and down this administration. Um, but we clearly have, have more work to do. We need to make sure that every single young person out there and every not so young person out there knows that you are valued, you are heard, you are seen, and you deserve to live with dignity and safety and pride right here in Massachusetts. Because we know one thing to be true, when the Asian American community thrives, Massachusetts thrives. And now I want to bring up someone very special, and that is our fabulous mayor of Boston, Michelle Wu. Michelle Wu, um, I've had the honor to, to and privilege of working alongside her in government in different capacities over the last several years. And uh, Mayor Wu is somebody who is truly about community. She is about listening to the needs of community and particularly in a time um, when there are disparities and there is fragility and there's vulnerability, making sure that no one is left behind. And the fact of the matter is some voices have not been heard. Some voices have not been listened to. And Mayor Wu is about addressing that. And I really, really respect that. She's a, of course, in so many ways, a role model to so many. She is a trailblazer. Um, and she has time to do things like be an incredible concert pianist. I mean, it's, did you see her the other day? I mean, honestly, what politician would have the guts to get up and perform on that stage? It just is a sign of her tenacity, her resilience, and, and also the joy with which she um, lives her life and is about the betterment, not only of the lives of her two beautiful sons, 
but the lives of children across this great city and across this great state. And so I am just so happy that Mayor Wu, with her incredibly busy schedule, is joining us here today, and we welcome her to the podium. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much to the governor, lieutenant governor, and all of our leaders at the legislature and across the state and the administration for hosting us today. This is truly a historic gathering. It is, it is a special event, and just looking around the room, the incredible leaders representing every sector who are here, who have knocked down barriers across every field and, and pave the way and continue to ensure that we have a voice and that we are uh, actively shaping policies and decision making. I'm just in awe of the, the crowd that's gathered here. So thank you, Governor, so much for your leadership and thank you to um, your entire team and for everyone for being here. Um, <laughs> Not, I hate to overgeneralize, but um, some folks in this room might understand when I say my parents are prouder of my Symphony Hall appearance than <laughs> anything about politics. <laughs> so, <laughs> there was a little bit of, you know, after different inaugurations, like, okay, that was fine. But Symphony Hall is now <laughs> all those years of lessons, etc. Um, this is an, an, a the People's Building represented by the People's Administration and uh, the partners at the House and Senate who really are, are nationally recognized champions for our community. And um, this month when we celebrate Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander heritage here in Boston and across the Commonwealth, um, I especially want to thank those leaders from our community, some of whom uh, were recognized already, um, Reps Howard, Idaho Van Chan, Wong, um, and when Nina Liang is here from Quincy, our superstar, um, and who is opening doors for so many in elected office as well. Thank you, thank you. I was told that um, Cambridge City Manager Ian Huang might be oh, over there. Welcome to your new post. Thank you. Um, and Vice Chair Deepika Sani from the uh, Lexington School Committee, I was told might be on the RCP list. Oh, <laughs> nice to see you. And I just want to reflect, um, you know, I grew up in a moment and maybe in a situation as the oldest child in an immigrant family where language barriers and cultural ba barriers were part of our daily existence and leaving the house every day, um, I, the, the kind of roles would reverse as soon as we crossed the threshold. Inside the house, mom and dad were all knowing, all wise, very much in charge, um, and then as soon as we stepped over that doorway, I would be pushed out front as the translator and interpreter for the family. Um, that meant that in many ways I felt my Asian American identity was both a, a, a contradiction with feeling invisible in a lot of ways and not necessarily recognized as, as an individual and kind of lumped in, in in many stereotypes, but also so utterly visible in other ways. It's sticking out in a way that, um, you know, whether it's lunches that you brought to school or, or just uh, comments from, from those on the street in the community. And when I came to Boston for the first time and found my way to Chinatown and to get to know some of our API communities across the city and this commonwealth, there was just such a sense of relief and belonging for the first time in my life that I felt and that is because leaders have been at it in our communities for a very, very, very long time. Making sure that, for example, in Boston's Chinatown, we could still maintain and are still fighting every day for one of the most residential Chinatowns anywhere in the country where, where the housing stock um, relative to other areas that have become more commercialized in, in other API communities across the country has been relentlessly fought for and preserved and still needs to be added to in affordability. Where the infrastructure with organizations like Viet Aid, who I think I saw um, George here somewhere in the crowd and um, so many others across the state have really focused on providing a hub for all the services that may exist in buildings like this to actually reach community and to actually connect. 
So um, to the leaders who have made this possible, Auntie Helen, uh, on the just so many fronts with from media, philanthropy, uh, community service, and, and um, nonprofits, those who paved away the paved the way in politics, Leverett in this building uh, for many many years, Suzanne, who's uh, the first to run from our community in Boston, and continues to keep that door pushed as wide open as possible. Um, those who are educators in academia, in small business, in um, public safety and the many, many hats that you all wear working in the community as well. I think we've spent a lot of time together already this month. I've seen a lot of folks in this room at multiple events even this week. And it's just such a credit to this administration and uh, this state that we're able to have such a fruitful and exciting Heritage Month with celebrations right here in the halls of power. Um, Okay, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go through my script because I think I've blasted through it. Um, I will just end on one thing. When I um, first started to think about running for office, it was a terrifying idea. It had been suggested to me by a few folks and rejected by me um, many times. And it was because I just, my entire time growing up, had never not only thought, planned, not only, or even imagined that this could be a role that would be possible. I had never met an elected official growing up. I think until sometime in, in college there was an event where someone came and spoke. Um, I had not known anyone who had been in politics or, or government. And I hope that with the leaders that we have gathered here in elected office, in various leadership roles in public service that this administration is appointing and that you all are, are representing in all the various fields, that we're providing a different ripple effect on the next generations. Yesterday, we had the chance to hold our um, AA NHPI celebration at the city level on City Hall Plaza, and we had some cultural performances and uh, food and gathering from our ERG. And uh, it just struck me because one of the young performers who's about this big and um, what had been performing her, her dance number with a number of um, with other performers, she ran up to me right afterwards and, um, and, and just, she said, I've seen you, I've took two pictures with you before, and I, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my, get, add, add one more to my collection. So I'm excited that as someone who grew up never meeting an elected official, period, uh, that we have so many incredible examples in the city and the commonwealth of people who represent our communities, feel connected, and that our young people just think it's another normal thing when they can see all of us out and about. So thank you for your, what you do. Oh. Um, and I get to pass the microphone over to uh, someone who is such an exciting leader, making a big, big difference already. Um, her leadership on behalf of the administration has been collaborative and thoughtful and innovative and really centered on our communities. Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe. Thank you so much, Mayor Wu. Uh, and uh, my two teenage girls have grown up knowing Mayor Wu, and they are such big fans. So thank you so much uh, for all your leadership. Thank you, Governor. Thank you to Lieutenant Governor. We are so lucky in this state to have this rock star group of leaders, um, and it is such an honor to be here with, with them and with all of you. Um, thank you all for making time today to come and join us for the celebration of our um, incredibly strong and diverse Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander community here in Massachusetts. It's so fun to see so many prominent leaders from across, uh, across our community. Many of you have been mentors and inspirations and friends for so many years. And I also want to just call out one particular person here, which is Auntie Helen. Um, okay, so Auntie Helen had her 90th birthday a few months ago, and she has more energy and more ideas than all of us combined. She just told me that she usually takes Sunday off, but because I was so late in getting her the invitation, she took her, she actually worked on Sunday for us to kind of make sure we could get this event organized. But just to know, Auntie Helen is an example. She is the OG, as my kids would say. She is the trailblazer. She started her career in this state house as an intern in 1949. And none of us would be here without your incredible um, leadership and inspiration. So thank you for paving the way. So, 
So it is an honor to be here. Um, and But like um, Mayor Wu and the Governor talked about, it's also kind of improbable to be here uh, in so many ways for me. And so I, I, like Mayor Wu did, maybe I thought I would share uh, some stories uh, from my background and also why Massachusetts is so important to me. So it is improbable. My grandmothers were born in China. And they, when they were small girls, had their feet bound. So I remember shopping with them in the U.S. when they were in their 80s, and we would go to the children's section of the shoe stores because they were size four feet. That's my grandmothers. My grandfathers were also born in China. They were generals uh, in the army with Chiang Kai-shek, and they first fought the Japanese, and then they fought the communists, and they lost both times, and they had to flee the country. So my parents grew up in Taiwan, and their goal in life was, if we study hard enough, maybe we can get to Meigua. So Mei in Chinese is beautiful, Guo is country. So maybe we can get to the beautiful country, which is America. And that, that was improbable at the time, but it was made probable by Massachusetts because of one of our great Massachusetts leaders, President John F. Kennedy. When he became president, he started immigration reform, and because of his work, my parents could come to this country in 19, because of the 1965 Immigration Act, and um, they came here for graduate school, they met each other, they fell in love, and I was the first person to be born in this country in my family. And I grew up outside of Chicago in the same exact town that Mayor Wu grew up in. So Barrington, Illinois, which is crazy. So, so Massachusetts plays a role in my story. It really played a role in my story um, when I came here for the first time for college. So I went to Williams College along with Jeff Wong, class of 95 here. Um, but when, when we arrived on campus uh, and my first time in Massachusetts, it also was the first time Williams hired a, an Asian American history professor. And I took his class. And that was the first time I learned about the history of our people in this country. It's the first time I heard about the Chinese Exclusion Act, which um, was in the railroads in the 1800s. It's the only time our country has denied an entire category of people from ever becoming citizens. I learned about the Japanese internment camps, uh, where we took um, Americans who were born here in this country. Many of them did not speak Japanese, had no connection to Japan during World War II, and we took them from their homes and forced them into these camps that were in terrible conditions. Um, and you know. So, we, so I learned about that. And I learned about all of the other history of all of our people in this country and about all the work we still have to do together. So Massachusetts played a really important role in shaping my understanding of our people here. And then the improbable is why I am here is, um, is because of two other exceptional Massachusetts leaders, uh, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, who somehow saw in me uh, the ability to perhaps be helpful to our state and, and took a leap of faith in, in, in asking me to take on um, economic development for our state. So I am very, very honored. And we are working on really important things for our state. We're working on equity, working on affordability, working on competitiveness. And when we think about economic development, we think about all of our 7 million people across the state. Large ones, small ones, every kind of business, starting here, staying here, expanding here, thriving here, becoming world leaders here. And we think about all of our regions of our state thriving and growing uh, together. And, and the AA and HPI community is a huge part of that. So I'm really excited to work with all of you uh, together on this. Um, and so I was talking to my teenage girls last night, and they told me that, you know, my job reminds them a lot of two Chinese words that uh, we say a lot at home. And so this is another improbable thing. I'm going to teach everyone some Chinese. So my girls said, um, you should tell everybody about hezuo. Hezuo means basically do it together. And my two girls are very close in age. So There's a lot of squabbling at home, uh, including last night about whose Spotify playlist they should, you know, we should listen to. We only, we're cheap, so we only have one Spotify, so they're fighting. So hezuo means just do it together. It'll just be better if you just do it together and figure it out. So hezuo is one concept that we talk about a lot in our family and I think is relevant for our state. The other one is they said you should talk to them about jayo. Jayo means, you know, add gasoline, like get it done, Jayo. And you say this a lot when you're on the soccer field or on the tennis, the tennis court. And so uh, I am so grateful and honored to be here. It's improbable to be here, but I'm so excited to Hudzua together as Team Massachusetts across our A and HPI community and across the whole state. And let's go Jayo, let's get it done. Go Team Massachusetts. So thank you so much. Go Celtics. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to the governor. Okay. <laughs> Where am I going to sign? Oh, oh, that, there's a little desk. That's so cute. Okay. So let's have all of our colleagues here from the legislature and secretary and the mayor. Why don't you? And we're going to go sign this proclamation. And everyone can. Sorry, you can't hear me. We're going to go over there. You can all stand and sort of, you know, watch this. And of course, we have wonderful. 
Uh, some wonderful refreshments, too, so everyone's welcome to... to Everyone who would like to stand be behind, um, please go right now. You can go calmly to stand 